Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So uh, the first thing I want to say is that I want to apologize if there was a misunderstanding about people where I uh, before I introduced a sermon that I would mention about the donation button link. Uh, to be quite honest, our church, we are not out here to grab your money. The only reason why I say that is because uh, the people in our church who give us the offering, usually I say that as a reminder to them so that they can remember to give the money to the church. And then for the people who are online, they are wondering about how to give to our church, which is the reason why I mentioned that. So that's the only reason why I would give the specifics on how to give us the money. If some of you are upset about that, then the simple answer is then just don't give. <laughs> it's that simple. So only the people who want to give to the Lord, we take your money with full gratitude. But the people who do not like that, we don't really care because the Lord takes care of our needs anyways. The second thing that I want to say is that there is no Wednesday Bible study. So it's just this particular service, and it won't be too long. As you might all know, I'm still trying to recover back to 100% health. So I hope that you'll put up with me uh, with this background just for today. So this sermon may not take too long. And for those of you who want to give to our ministry, just right now go to the About section in our YouTube channel. Once you click the About section, just scroll down and you'll see a donation button to San Jose Church. Just click on that right now if you want to. And then there's a different way as well. If you prefer mailing, you just mail it to P.O. Box 97, Santa Clara, California, 95050. So that'll be addressed to San Jose Bible Baptist Church. P.O. Box 97, Santa Clara, California, 95050. Okay, while you're all doing that, we're going to look at James chapter 4 and verse 8. James chapter 4 and verse 8. And the title of today's message will be, Wash Your Hands, More Than 20 Seconds. Okay, so what am I talking about over here? So during this coronavirus situation, I'm taking advantage by thinking about everything that people are going through where the sermon can directly apply to them. And it's something more important than just washing your hand for 20 seconds. For those of you who do not believe that this virus exists, well, we can all agree anyway that we should be clean, right? So just please tolerate with me over here for those of you who do believe the virus exists or who don't believe the virus exists. The point is this. The point is, is that in our whole world, everybody is taking the important realization about cleanliness and sanitation, and they're washing their hands for more than 20 seconds or about at least 20 seconds. But I argue here that it should be more than 20 seconds. And it has to do with something that's deeper and more insidious than the coronavirus. You might say, really, what is it? Well, the Bible talks about it. You might say, really, the Bible talks about it. Absolutely. Look at James chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So something that's more insidious than a fleshly physical virus is actually sin. Sin is something that is more insidious, and that should be something where you should constantly wash your hands, and not just 20 seconds. But we now live in a day and age where Christians think that they can just wash their hands for at least 20 seconds, and they're good enough. But actually, no, God wants you to constantly wash yourself. If you look at Ephesians chapter 5, we are the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ is supposed to constantly wash itself under the word of God. And I wonder how many of you have 
cleansed yourself in the word of God, especially during this, uh, especially during this shelter in place, I wonder how much you have washed yourself. So I'm going to come across some certain points where basically I want you to ask some serious questions to yourself, do some serious pondering, especially from the previous sermons that I preached to you. The first thing that I want to mention is this, is that how much have you changed yourself during this coronavirus outbreak? Now, you got to realize this, is that during this coronavirus situation, I strongly believe it is by God where the Lord allowed it to happen to test the church and to see how much they would change their lives. Now, what throughout the previous sermon, some of you have given me encouraging compliments that the sermons that you've heard were probably my best sermons ever because they were, ap uh, they were actually most applicable and most helpful to you. Well, that's the thing that I'm trying to draw at right over here is that because these are the most powerful sermons, these should be the most impactful upon your life. They should be the sermons that should bring the number one, the most change in your life. So how much did you change? Or are you the same? Are you the same now after my sermons on COVID-19? Are you the same now compared to before you heard my sermons? How much did you change? Do you recall all the sermons that I preached to you and where you had a stirring passion and conviction where you want to change your life and then take opportunity during the shelter in place situation to be able to improve more things for the Lord Jesus Christ? Perhaps this shelter in place is the best opportunity where you can find more things about yourself that you need to change that you haven't thought about changing before. Things that you can improve upon the church that you're working with, things that you never thought about before. As you might recall in my previous sermons, I mentioned about how before COVID-19, every one of us were drawn to this machine mentality, the machine of just waking up in the morning, washing up, going to work, completing all my projects, and then my schoolwork. For some of you young people, getting back to video games and to internet chats. For some of you adults, taking care of bills for my family, taking care of my children. And then for some of you who even go to church, you're probably thinking of it as a machine. Just wake up, and go to church, and then come back home and do my normal routine again on my fleshly things, my fleshly habits. But because of this COVID-19 situation, finally woke us up out of this machine where we're finally having alone time with God, where we're finally lingering about getting back to church and the, getting back into fellowship with the brethren again. Some of you have missed that. Some of you have missed singing hymns. Some of you have missed the full freedom of passing out tra tracks and knocking on doors and preaching on the streets. So this COVID-19 situation has been one of the best opportunities for some of you to finally wake up. Not only that, for even lost people, to finally think about God. And for some of you, it was probably finally an answer to your prayer about your loved ones considering about the gospel and getting a chance to get saved. So this COVID-19 situation is rich with bright sides despite of the negative side. Despite of all the negative things, there is a bright side of this coronavirus where it is rich with opportunity to finally win the lost loved one to salvation, to wake up yourself into the importance of church and fellowship, opening your eyes about trying to retract fellowship with the brethren, and then opening your eyes about alone time with the Father, a wake-up call where you finally see flaws in your characters that you didn't see before and now you matured, but 
Did you really see all those things? Did you take advantage of those opportunities or did you waste them? How much have you changed? How much have you taken opportunity to take advantage of this only chance and situation? Because once the shelter in place is gone, guess what? It's back to what? Going to work, brushing your teeth, to the machine system of the flesh, the world, and the devil again. Are you going to go back to that world system again, or are you going to take opportunity of this chance of this shelter in place to, okay, here are some things that I can see as an open door and an opportunity. So let me take advantage of it before I get swallowed up to the world's machine again. By the time the shelter in place is over, my deep desire and prayer is that many of you who are watching this sermon, and not just my church members, but anybody watching this sermon, is that their life for Jesus Christ will improve 10 times more just because of this coronavirus situation, just because of this shelter in place. It's something like we're paying back. It's like a one-up on the devil, right, on my previous sermon. Let's all one-up on the devil, the world, the elites, whoever's running the show here, and our own sinful flesh. Let's one-up on all these things. Let's take opportunity and do it together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Or did you? Or did you waste them? Take advantage right now. How much did you change? Ask yourself. After listening to the previous sermons from Pastor Kim, I wonder how much I changed. Ask yourself that. Another thing that I want to talk about is reviewing the process of the positive sides and the important applications in the previous sermons that I've given to you. I want to just freshly review all of that on a lot of the things that you can do for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then ask yourself if you've, done, if you've been doing it. Before I mention some of those things, maybe I could disclose about myself. So on my end, there were a lot of things that the Lord changed me because of this COVID-19 situation. If God didn't do that, I strongly believe that I would not have been more powerful today. So I hope that this encourages my church that, you know, the last time you've seen your pastor, he was actually less powerful compared to now. When I get back into business, the Lord has filled me so much with the power of his spirit, taught me and changed me on a lot of things that I can't wait to get back and to get aim back, just one up on the devil. So on my end, there were several things, and I'm not going to get into too many specifics, but one of them was where I was finally forced to take more opportunity with technological advances and more resources out there where I can spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So some exciting things is that I, there were some things that I've always been burdened upon. I've given a prayer to the Lord a long time ago. Um, majority of you may not know this, but I've given a, a promise to the Lord a long time ago that I said, Lord, if you would give me the power to proclaim your gospel, to I promise that I will reach each and every single person around the whole world with Bible-believing truth. If you would empower me with that, and I will not compromise one bit, and I'm not going to be like a lot of pastors, including, sadly, some Bible-believing pastors who compromised, who watered down. I promise, Lord, I won't be like that. I'll be all the way on fire. And you know what? Because I've given that promise to the Lord, that's what I've been striving all this time. And that's why uh, I'm not saying that I'm the greatest guy. And I, and I know there are plenty of other Bible believers who are better than me, whom the Lord could have used. But the Lord, nevertheless, used weak, frail, imperfect me to have this kind of internet worldwide ministry. And perhaps one of the reasons is because I gave that promise to the Lord a long time ago. Now, the thing is, is 
because I've given that promise to the Lord, now the Lord has opened up more doors for me to be able to reach some of you people out there. So I have some ideas in mind where I can finally open up some sort of a uh, online church service or something like that to different countries around the world where there can be fellowship platforms to some of you who've been all alone and wanted a Bible-believing church. So I've had some specifics and the Lord burned up my mind. Why? Because of this COVID-19 situation. If he didn't do that, I would have just resumed doing what I normally do with my church, with the YouTube channel, and with phone calls, emails, and etc. But because of this COVID-19, now I'm excited where I have some thoughts where I can uh, deal with foreign countries around the world and be able to get in touch where people can have access to Bible-believing leaders in their foreign country. So that's an exciting thing. Another thing is where I finally had a chance to be able to grow my own members. Now, my members have been growing under my training to teach and preach, praise the Lord. But because of this COVID-19 situation, now they are forced to do it at least once a week. So we go onto a Zoom platform, and then we keep in touch with every one of our members. And I also give them a chance to taste what a pastor's work is like in following up people in not only just teaching and preaching, but learning how to pastor people, follow up people, pray for them, and to take care of them, and to be concerned about each and every individual, and not just selected people. So this was a great chance, finally, where I can grow my own members to do that. So only because of this COVID-19 situation that I was able to do it. Another thing also was, where during this COVID-19 situation, I was able to finally, to not only just see my people once or twice a week, but be able to somehow during the weekday, and not just on a Wednesday, but during the weekday, where everybody can still stay in touch, where people can be able to build up fellowship even more strongly. Those who have not been uh, talkative in our church now can have a chance to talk more in the Zoom meetings. And not only that, where some of the people in our church can be able to follow up and keep tabs and people can be more bonded together. So that's what I've been doing more within our church that the Lord used me on. And another thing that the Lord used me on was where my preaching was able to become much stronger because I was able to think more deeply on issues that people were struggling, and especially my own issues. Now, some of you know that I've been going through a sickness. Now, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be the virus or something uh, major or serious. Or for some of you who don't believe this virus exists, well, at least it's not a serious sickness, let's just say then. But the point is, is that because of this health deterioration that I went through, and I've noticed where throughout the past years that I am getting weaker. So compared to my older videos, now some of you say that I look young now and that's only by the grace of God. But if you look at my much older videos, I was much younger. I looked much younger, more energetic. And I was much louder too. But what happened now is that I've gone through a lot more uh, strenuous situations and a lot more attacks from the devil. So because of that, uh, my health uh, collapsed. And even though it's minor right now, it got me to thinking a lot. And you might say, what did it cause you to think? Well, I improved my life more. I changed my character just because of that sickness, because of this shelter in place situation. So one of them was I thought about how to be more busy for the Lord. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, uh, you should be resting more. Correct. So I've learned to self-care and to practice self-care. And I believe that if I don't take care of my health, then I am sinning. And so I should be very careful. But this shelter in place and that sickness caused me to uh, realize how I can be more busy for the Lord. You might say, really? Yeah, because when I saw my health deteriorate, 
I realize that I've got to practice more patience and rest. So that's a given. But surprisingly, it caused me to learn, hey, you can be more busy for the Lord. You might say, why? The reason why is this is because, because I took this as an attack from Satan where I'm able to reach people out there during this COVID-19 situation. I've realized that my tenacity in fighting has got to be even stronger. So in the past, I've learned to be wise and to hang tough for Jesus Christ. But when I was, uh, to be quite honest, when I was under attack, I felt a lot of hurt. And even though um, I did my best to pull through, I nevertheless felt very uh, hurt and I lacked a lot of motivation. But now, the Lord taught me about getting motivated during attacks and not get discouraged, getting motivated when being sick and not get depressed. When during loneliness where people might feel miserable, I actually become stronger and more exhilarated. So that's what the Lord did for me. Uh, if you read famous accounts of missionaries who went through trials and persecution, you see a lot of their disheartening situations that they would sob about, and rightfully so. But me, I've learned to cast that aside this time. I've learned to become more strong and encouraged and fired up for Jesus. So that's why some people now think that my strongest and my best sermon was the one that I preached Sunday, The Christian War of COVID-19. That was the title of my sermon as Sunday. But that only came about because God taught me something in my character that I can improve. So that will help me immensely when the enemies attack me. That'll help me immensely when trials come up next time. Now, how about you? What did the Lord teach you to change? What did the Lord, how did the Lord pull you through to improve some things in, in your life? If you haven't, then all of this is in vain, this COVID-19 situation. No, I don't believe that. I believe that all things work together for good and you should take advantage of it. The Lord's doing this to teach you something. Take advantage of that. Did you think about the previous sermons that I preached about on what you can do during this COVID-19 situation? I mean, like this is the best chance to win lost souls, right? Have you applied that in your life? Is that what changed in you? About spending alone time with the Lord. Did that change in you? Did you take opportunity to apply that point from the sermon? And did that change you? How about patience? A lot of people can't stand that one. And I'll tell you what, this COVID-19 situation has definitely taught us, and I'm including myself, about being still and waiting on the Lord and being patient on his timetable. Did that change you? How about thankfulness? During this COVID-19 situation, a lot of the things that you saw outside, you you've taken for granted. Now we've got so many people who are finally going around exercising rather than spending their stupid time wasted away on iPhones and internet and cable TV and video games, etc. Finally, they're going outside. They're being thankful about God's outdoor creation. How about you? This COVID-19 situation has taught people what it's like to shut out entertainment, drinking places, gambling, casinos, etc., and to just be outside in God's creation. How about that, huh? How about that? So did that change within you? Or are you still a machined, typical American? where you're drawn away into this technological computerized generation where you need sin, where you need entertainment, movies, theaters, etc., to find joy in life. So did you take some of the things you've learned from this COVID-19 situation about where people are finally pondering and considering God and that's finally an answer to your prayer where you're taking advantage of that to lead people to salvation, to get them to consider Christ. Think about all the things that I preached in my previous sermon. 
and seeing if you applied them in your life where you changed. I talked about isolation, a lot of detriments concerning isolation. Well, did you apply that in your life and did you change? How much did you change during this COVID-19 situation? And what did you change? Think about that now. Write it down right now. And I want you to look at that piece of paper and see how long that list is on how much you changed. Do you think that change is enough? Do you think that change is enough at the judgment seat of Christ? I'll tell you what, if you can't change now, while you're outside of that fleshly machine system, then my fear is that when you're back to the fleshly machine system, how can you change? I mean, when you go to the judgment seat of Christ right now, what is it that you want to change? Hmm. What is it you want to change when you go to the judgment seat of Christ? If you now know what it is, why not think about that now? on what you wanna change. Why not do it now for the Lord? So when you're washing your hands, sinners, what's going on is that this is a daily process, right? This is something that you need to keep washing, washing yourself so that what? You can come out changed, clean hands, not the same old dirty hands. And if you're to clean up your hands right now, which would come to my third point here, you're going to find the dirt that you didn't see before. You know, uh, because this COVID-19 situation, I finally thought about some things that I could change in my life. I have finally, I saw more of the dirt in me. You know, I'm not saying that um, at the beginning, I, I had like really big pride issues or fleshly issues or like weak, or that I was such a weak sissy for the Lord, but because I was cleaning my hands even more, I saw a little grimes, little grimes of those fleshly spots that I didn't see before, the weak sides I didn't see before, the prideful sides that I didn't see before, and just the depressing sides, the sad sides, the dark sides I didn't see before. This coronavirus situation taught me to be even more humble compared to back then, to become more prayerful compared to back then, to become more fired up and more of a soldier, strong soldier for the Lord compared to back then, to be more spirit-filled compared to back then, to be more loving toward others compared to back then, and to be more non-compromising and rebuking sin and wrong doctrine and false heretics out there compared to back then. So how about you? So when you're washing yourself, when you're thinking about what things I should change, you're gonna find the dirt. So let's say, for example, that what you want to change on was, well, I want to spend more prayer time with my Lord. Well, what's gonna happen is this, is that when you start to, when you decide to change that more for the Lord in, during this washing situation, then what's going on is that you're going to find more of the dirt. You're going to realize, wow, when you try to wake up in the morning to pray, you're going to go, man, my flesh doesn't want to pray. And then you start to realize, you know, I thought that I was a hardworking person, but I realized that I'm actually more lazy than I thought. See, now you found the dirt that you didn't see before. So when you wash for more than 20 seconds, wash carefully, and you're going to see the dirt somewhere that you've overlooked. Some of you might say, well, you know, I thought I didn't have pride issues before when I'm trying to help out the pastor, and then when I'm teaching this kind of doctrine, well, Hey, maybe when you decide to change, you know, I got to change on teaching in a way that can edify the people and not burden people. And when you think like that, then you're going to realize as you're going through this washing situation, wow, actually, I realize that the reason why I'm teaching this deep stuff is because 
I want to show off something that I know. And then I realize that maybe I'm more prideful than I thought. I want to teach something that edifies the people. So I'm going to teach something maybe they need to hear encouragement during this situation of COVID-19. See that? So that's why you're going to see more things about the temptations, the signs of temptations, certain attack patterns that Satan will use on you that you did not see before if you decide to change. If you say, okay, I'm going to change, let's change. Keep your eyes peeled and open for the certain attack patterns. Ask the Lord to give you wisdom to open your eyes, and then you're going to see more of the dirt. I'll tell you what. Because of this COVID-19 situation, when I was washing my hands, I saw so much dirt in me that I didn't see before. The last thing I want to conclude in this message is that if I already asked you, which I did, how much did you change? And what did you change? And then your answer is a little bit of a discouraging answer where, well, not much like I should have. I just want to tell you this. It's not too late. You know, I could have uh, given this message near the end of the shelter in place on how much did you change for the Lord during this whole coronavirus situation. But thank God that I can preach this during, one, during the middle time of the shelter in place. You might say, why? Because I can give you another chance. The Lord's giving you another chance to change. Because once the shelter in place is over, you lost your only opportunity that forced you to be still and know that he is God. To look at the dirt that you didn't see before. To just be patient and let the Lord open, on, open your eyes and make you see things that you never saw before. So why not do it now? Before it's too late, before the shelter in place is over, consider what to change. Write down what you need to change. Look carefully at the dirt patterns that you didn't see before. Recall all the previous sermons that I preached that you can practice and apply in your life during this COVID-19. Take your chance now to change while you still have it. It's not too late. Change now for the Lord. What will you change during this COVID-19 situation? Hmm. I've asked you at the beginning, how much did you change for the Lord? Well, at the end of this shelter in place, I might ask some of you people at church, so how much did you change? for the Lord.